And if one rejects Christ, then the penalty must be exacted from, from you. So that's what I said about given the uniqueness of Christ's substitutionary death, uh, there isn't any salvation apart from him. I was wondering, um, you had mentioned that, or here's the question, if, if it is possible for someone to come to salvation through general revelation apart from hearing the gospel, would it then follow that it is not absolutely necessary that Christ were to die for our sins, thus rendering the answer to the question, are there many roads to God, to be yes, or at least two, through general revelation and through the preaching of the gospel. And um, I guess to, to follow that up would be, uh, is the problem well, How about is, if I respond to the first half, or I'm going to forget? It, it kind of con it kind of connects. All right. <laughs> is the problem with general? Can there be a problem with general revelation that is our problem in the way we see it, rather than the problem of general revelation? Sin is so. Yeah. You know the the, the right. results or the effects of the fall right. have affected the way that I see God in revelation in general revelation thus rendering it right. not efficacious. Okay. So, it's very important to see that revelation is just the imparting of information. And so revelation itself doesn't save anybody. It's not the basis of salvation. It's just the channel of information or, or mediation by which one learns about these things. So if there were no substitutionary death of Christ, then general revelation would be impotent to communicate any salvation to people because no one will have paid the debt, right? No one will have made the atoning sacrifice. So what I'm suggesting is not some alternative to Christ's sacrificial death as a means of salvation. What I'm just suggesting is that there are different ways of accessing what Christ has done on the cross. And it would be based upon how much information you've been given. And for those who respond to general revelation in appropriate ways, God could apply to them the benefits of Christ's death without them knowing about Christ. But that view, I think, many, many people want to just stop there and say that solves the problem. But you see, I don't think it does because I think the really difficult problem is the one that I was discussing with the gal over here a moment ago. And that is, what about the person who rejects general revelation, but who would have been saved if he had heard the gospel. In that case, this inclusivistic view does nothing to solve that problem. Um, it just says that people can be saved through general revelation, uh, but it doesn't do anything to help with the problem of the person who rejects general revelation, but would have been saved if only it had special revelation. And, and that's why I want to propose this additional uh, element that God in his providence orders the world so that no one is lost because of the accidents of geography and history, that everybody who wants or even would want to be saved will be saved. And therefore, I think this just completely pulls the rug out from under the challenge of religious pluralism to uh, Christian particularism and salvation exclusively through Christ alone.